I want to talk to you a few minutes this morning, if I can, about hope. <clears throat> hope is not something that uh, you can always see, but it's always something that uh, you can feel in your heart and in your life. There's hope. Uh, Greta Wiseman, who was uh, one of the ladies that made it to the Nazi concentration camps in Germany during World War II, was being interviewed by a radio announcer, and uh, she was telling him about uh, where they found hope in the concentration camp. And she said, one day we were standing in line waiting for a review. We'd stood there for hours. <clears throat> Some women had even dropped because of fatigue. We stood and stood and still nobody came to review. And she said, all of a sudden, I looked over in the left-hand corner of the building and I saw a, a good-sized crack in the wall down at the base next to the floor. And out of that crack, I saw a flower coming out of that crack, growing out through that crack and blooming. She said, of all that we had in that concentration camp to produce hope, that flower was number one. We were very careful to nurture, once we found it, to nurture that flower that would continue to grow because it was a symbol of hope. Isaiah the prophet knew what she was talking about. Isaiah prophesied from 700 to 740 B.C. During that 40 years of his ministry, Four times the Assyrian army, plus one time the Egyptian army, invaded and pillaged the countryside and destroyed everything in sight, including man, women, child, and beast. They were people who were looking for hope. Was God just going to sit up there on his throne if that's where he was? Was he going to sit there and let them destroy the people that he had called out of Egypt? Brought them across the Red Sea and promised them the promised land. Was God just going to stand there, sit there and watch all this happen? No. Isaiah said, no, he won't. Well, the time is coming when God will cause a shoot to rise up from the stump of Jesse. Think of that. To rise up from the stump of Jesse and declare that this war will be no more. That there will be peace. The wolf will lie down with the lion, lamb. The lion will lie down with the goats. A little child will thrust his hand into the hole of poisonous snakes and not be bitten. There will be nothing but peace on earth. That's what Isaiah saw. That's what Isaiah saw. He refused to give up. He would not give up. How many of you watch The Voice? Did you, ever, did you see The Voice this past week? Well, Janet and I, that sort of religion with us, we watch The Voice every time we get a chance, and we, we don't seldom see it when it comes on, so we record it, then when we get time, we can play The Voice back. They were competing on The Voice for the top three in the competition. One of the competitors was Craig Wayne Boyd. 
he had to decide with his guide what he would do to get into the top three. And when he came out and started to sing, what do you suppose he sang? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And I said to Janet, as long as somebody in the world today, in a setting like that, can come out and sing the old rugged cross and do it with tremendous strength, there's hope in the world. There's still hope. I tell you, <clears throat> I don't know about you folks, but there have been times when I've sort of despaired in the last few years about our country. I wondered if the best hasn't already come and gone, and that we'll not see any more the best. We'll only experience the worst. But I hope we have it. I hope the best is still before us, before us. Now let me say to you very quickly that hope you know and I know is based on our faith in God. The God who created the heavens and the earth, who flung the stars from his fingertips and hung the earth on nothing, that God created the heaven and the earth and declared that there's hope. Hope. Economic systems might fail, governments will fail and go, but hope in God and with God will remain. Jim DeBosche tells about being in an art museum and he was moving down the wall looking at the pictures and all of a sudden he stopped in front of this one, it grabbed him. And he said he saw there a man, an old man, dilapidated clothes on him and, and unkempt and a little boy standing beside him. And the little boy was standing there looking forlorn, desolate. And underneath it was these words, Hush, child, God ain't dead yet. Hush, child, God ain't dead yet. He said, I went away from there knowing that God was alive and well, and that there was hope because God was and is today in the world. Carl Sandburg put it this way, the, one of the greatest historians in the 20th century, said that as long as children were being born, there's hope. As long as children are being born, there's hope. He seemed to know about that. Now, there's nothing sadder, it seems to me, than to see people who have no hope. Once in a while, you see someone who has no hope. I remember being asked to go to visit a lady who was bedfast by her own decision. She wouldn't get out of bed for her husband. She wouldn't get out of bed for her kids. She stayed in bed. She had no hope. All she needed was hope. It's terrible to see someone who has no hope. Terrible. Well, if you can understand that there's nothing sadder than that, then you know how terrible the world could be. William Willimon tells about a man in Appalachia in the coal fields. He lost his job in the coal mines and hadn't worked for over a year. He came home one day and saw his two children sitting on the back porch, thumbing through a Sears Roebuck catalog, 
looking at things that wish they had and knew they'd never get. And for some reason, he just flipped. He went into a rage. He ran outside, pulled his belt off, and thrashed both of those kids, grabbed that Sears Roebuck catalog and tore it to pieces, and went out in the yard to sit down and bawled like a baby. Hope. When hope is gone, we live in a situation that's not very funny, nor it's not easy to live in. We need to know that there's hope out there for us in the world today. Hope is what Christmas is all about, isn't it? We have hope because Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem, hope, knowing that God is and that he loves and cares for us is so important. Arthur Gordon <laughs> tells about a parachutist who making his 19th jump and his chute got some way, didn't open up properly and got tangled up and he pulled his secondary chute and it got tangled up in the first one. He went plummeting to the earth 60 mile an hour and fell in to the edge of a lake. His body was just riddled to bits. The only thing was that he was still alive. They built him up, took him to the hospital and he was in the hospital for some time couldn't move his arms, couldn't move his feet, couldn't move anything except his head. He could think and all that, but that was it. And one day the nurse came, a nurse came in to see him wheeling a man in another wheelchair. And the man came in and told him who he was and told him how a year or so ago he had been in an automobile accident and his spinal cord had been severed and he was <clears throat> numb from his neck down. But, and yet, he said, I can see, I can talk, I can sing, I can feel. Yet, yet. He kept coming back to see this man. And he'd always start his conversation, and yet I can do this, and this, and this. Well, to make a long story short, the man who had been in airplane accident, parachute accident, finally got out of the hospital. Three years later, he was walking down the street without one limp in his body. And when someone <clears throat> asked him how all that came about, he said this, and yet, those two words were the words that brought hope to me in my situation. And yet, I can see, I can sing, I can hear, I can think, and yet. Well, we live in a world where hope really abounds. And we need to be carriers of hope. I want to stress that to you today. When you leave here, if you come into contact with somebody that needs hope, plant a seed in their lives, in their mind, in their hearts, that preadventure they'll have hope. <clears throat> the Henry's family is here today, as we'd expect. We hope with Cindy for the best. And I want to say to them, she got the best. She got the best. She is in a better place because of hope. Please don't forget that. Hope 
belongs to us. And where we can share that, we must share that. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, what number do we have is singing here? I think it's two. What?